Sports is brought to you by Jim White Honda. Third round of the high school football playoffs continue tonight. Teams getting closer and closer to that state title game. One note, Eastwood advances after Oak Harbor had to forfeit their game because of COVID concerns. We're going to start our coverage with Division 4. Clyde at Huron tonight and the Flyers hoping they have what it takes to make another deep playoff run. Second half Flyers leading 14-7. They add to it here. Jaden Cook back to pass. He sees nothing downfield so he's going to keep it. Weaving through the Tigers defense, finds the sidelines and now it's a foot race. Avoiding tackles, he goes 70 yards to the house to make it 21-7 Clyde. But after a few costly interceptions, it is all tied up at 21 with just over a minute left in the game. It is Cook again, airing it out to Griffin Knox. He hauls it in for the touchdown to take the lead and Clyde would hang on to win it 28 21. You know, the seed doesn't matter you know, like last year, underdogs every single game basically. And just like this year, you know, we're going to keep going until, you know, this, this train stops. So, you know, we did a great job tonight and hopefully next week we'll do the same. We had a probably a six game season at the start of it. And as a senior, it kind of hurt in the beginning. The thing I'm not going to be able to play a full season, but now that we're pushing on the past 10 weeks, it feels, it feels amazing. Proud of our kids coming on the road. Um, you know, a couple weeks in a row now against higher seeds and, and very good football teams. Uh, I'm proud of our resilience. We've grown. Um, you know, we've grown from early on in the season where we, we've lost some of those games to, uh, to now where we're growing up a little bit. And another one in Division 4, Bellevue unbeaten, taken on Kenton in the first quarter. Wildcats with the ball, and their quarterback goes back to pass, but some great pressure, and he is swallowed up by Nick Meisler for the sack. That defense would turn into offense. The handoff to Max Ray, and he goes right, finds a hole, is eventually tripped up, but not before picking up a first down. And then a few plays later, Keegan Ray with the quarterback keeper. He walks into the end zone for the easy touchdown and Bellevue routes Kenton 56-15. Otsego having an incredible year, trying to keep it going tonight at home against Winford. The Knights wasted no time getting going, already up 7-0 here. The handoff to Trent Leitner from the 25-yard line. He finds a hole, and he is gone. 75 yards to the house. It's 14-0 Knights. Then Otsego looking for more. Joseph Jirwa rolling to his left, slings it to Chase Helberg. That's three touchdowns in the first quarter alone. And to start the second quarter, more of the same. The pass over to Leitner, and he was unstoppable tonight. He'd shake off a man and take it all the way down the sidelines. He had five touchdowns on the night, and Otsego wins 51-14. Uh, it was a stack. It felt amazing. There's nothing better than that. Um, I mean, again, this third round of the playoffs here, and when that happens, it's just exciting. Electricity all over the place is, is amazing. We know every team that we play is a good team at this point, and they're a very good team. They're the best wide receivers, probably the best quarterback we've seen all year long, and, and we told our kids that, and, you know, we were worried. They had some great skill kids. Number three and number 11 were one of the fastest kids we've seen all year. And another one in Division 5, Liberty Benton taking on Richwood. In the second quarter, the Eagles were down by 14, but a big third down play by Ben Spees. He connects with Mason Richards for the first down, but that drive would stall. And then in the second half, Eagles driving here on fourth down. Spees finds Richards again for the first down to keep the drive alive. And then at the goal line, they give it to Nate Duray. He takes it in for the score, but it wasn't enough. Eagles would lose 28 to 7. Also, high school girls soccer action in Division 2 today. The Fighting Irish hosting the Bulldogs of Rossford in the first half. Carly Heiser gets free, just the keeper to beat. She'd fire a shot to the top corner for the first goal of the game. And then in the second half, Maya Patton streaking towards the net, fires a shot. It deflects off the keeper right back to her. She's not going to miss that twice. She buries it to put Central up 2-0, and the Fighting Irish would go on to win 3-0. Oak Harbor, the number one seed in the region, taking on Tiffin Columbian. In the first half, Rockets putting on the pressure early. Lily Detray kicks it to the net. It's blocked by the keeper, but rolls right out to Corey Helly, and she makes it a 1-0 game. Second half now, Rockets add to their lead. Paige Clune sends it in front of the net, and it finds Reno Gregory, and she buries it to make it a 2-0 game. Then late in the second half, Oak Harbor steals it. It's Holly Robinson. The ball slips right through the keeper's gloves and in. Oak Harbor wins 4-0. And Big Ten fans rejoice after weeks of watching the ACC and SEC play. Buckeyes, Wolverines, Hoosiers, Spartans, your wait is finally over. 
Ohio State kicking off the season with Nebraska. Game tied at seven here and Justin Fields looking downfield. He airs it out and Garrett Wilson comes down with it in the end zone. Fields starting that Heisman campaign in a hurry. Then Buckeyes up 10 here in the third quarter. Fields looking to throw. Nothing open, so he takes off, making plays with his feet. He is into the end zone, and Ohio State goes on to win 52-17. I was looking up to some the, the stands to celebrate with some fans, but nobody was really out there. So, uh, it, of course, it was uh, a little bit, you know, different. But, you know, uh, we, we just, uh, just, just try to bring our own energy to the game. So, I mean, it was definitely different, but I think we handled it well. To beat a, a Big Ten, um, you know, team like Nebraska, 52 to 17, I mean, that's it's a pretty impressive day just to beat them by one. And so, sure, the expectations are high, but the reality of it is just to go 1-0 and is, is a great day. And that was the number one goal. And, um, you know, we're, we're very proud of what we did today. Now, if you missed any of our coverage from this round of the high school football playoffs, you can catch it at WTOL.com or over on our YouTube page. That'll do it for sports.